Edward, and Dr. John Puthalil discuss Dr. John's book, Diabetes, The Real Cause and Right Cure. Dr. John, sir, how are you? I'm doing fine, David. How are you? I'm doing very good. You know, we, we were just speaking and you asked me where I was, but I realized that I very rudely did not ask you where you were. <laughs> so I'm in Portland, you? Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Okay. So we are on opposite sides, di both, both, both coasts and diagonally. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, technology is a marvelous thing. So Dr. Yeah. John, sir, you have written a number of books. I think you've written five books. Um, right. but, but the book we're going to talk about is Diabetes, The Real Cause and the Right Cure. And it's been out a couple of years, but I want to let you set the foundation for this because this is for people with type two diabetes. Um, this book offers, um, I don't want to, I don't want to mischaracterize it. It offers a, 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 a view they might not be getting uh, from more traditional sources. Is that say, fair? That is exactly right, because that is what prompted me to write this book. Because right now we have 120 million people in the United States, either with prediabetes or diabetes. That's like a 40 third. million have been diagnosed, 80 million are pre on prediabetes. Wow. That means they are marching and going to be most of them will be diabetic within the next few years. Now, I don't know a lot about diabetes. Um, I don't have it, which is great. Uh, is, is it something that can be avoided uh, if you or have the early signs? That is an excellent question because type 2 diabetes is not a hormonal disease as in type 1 diabetes. Okay. So the diabetes means, it, you see, it is funny. There's only one test to diagnose diabetes, elevation of blood glucose level, known as blood sugar. There's no other confirmatory test. There's nothing else, just one test, okay. and you are diagnosed, either pre-diabetic or diabetic. Interesting. And, and, and how does that, for, for a type 1 or type 2, how is that, how is that test effective or not effective? The... Yeah, let me back up a little bit and tell you a little bit history about diabetes itself. Yeah. Diabetes has been known, uh, in fact, ancient healers in India, they diagnosed diabetes. You know why? This is an interesting story. Very observant healers, they saw when a child peed on the ground, so, uh, when some child, ch children peed, the ants came to the pee. So they were curious, why did the ants come to this child's urine and not, what was the attractant? And somebody tasted the urine and found out it was sweet. Wow. That's... Later, they diagnosed into two, in adults who are obese, there is similar problem, but children had this problem. The type one is what happens in children and these children used to die by age 10. Gee. Wow. 100 years ago, two doctors in Canada detected that the problem is that their pancreas does not produce insulin. I've, I've heard and that. So now the question is, what is the role of insulin? Now, how do you know there is somebody outside the door of your home or your apartment? When somebody rings the doorbell, you know, right? Right. You don't know who it is, but at least you know there is somebody. When glu glucose is used by cells to produce energy for metabolic functions, but glucose has no doorbell to let the cell know I'm outside. That is the role of insulin. That is an excellent explanation because I actually understood it. <laughs> so if insulin is not there, ah. there's glucose outside, but the cell starves inside and cells in vital organs starve, the children died. Jeez. So once they purified insulin and injected insulin, these children lived normal, normal lives. Okay. So Dr. Jocelyn, you may have heard of Jocelyn Clinic in Boston. He said, famous diabetic clinic. He treated the maximum number of type one diabetic children with insulin and he was so amazed. He trained a cadre of nurses to go out into the community and preach uh, insulin to everybody. 
then his own relative, an elderly relative came up and showed up with high glucose. And he thought, oh, it's the same disease happening in adults. So he injected her with insulin and sugar en sure enough, her, her blood glucose level went down. Okay. So he told everybody, if you have diabetes, take insulin. Okay. Then something very funny happened. One, when there was a lab test that became available to measure the amount of insulin in the blood, they found out adults who develop diabetes already have enough insulin. Okay. Unlike children who don't have any insulin from their own pancreas, but adults have plenty of insulin. So then there's a question, why is the glucose level still high? Right? Yeah. In children, there is no insulin, so glucose is high. We can, everybody can understand that. Right. But in adults, if you have high insulin and high glucose at the same time, so they had to have, uh, the, the, the endocrinologist could say, well, it's a different disease. But there are more and more people coming with type 2 diabetes. So, yeah, 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 yeah no, I know, I know. We, we could, we, we'll, we'll avoid that part of the conversation, but, I, but I'd be willing to have it with you. Um, yep. Right. Yeah. So they didn't want to let these people go. They want to keep treating them. And it so happened, there was a report at, around that time of first report of penicillin resistant bacteria. Okay. When penicillin was discovered, everybody thought that's the end of bacterial disease. In World War II, they, no, they were injecting everybody with insulin, uh, penicillin, yep. and the soldiers were recovering. Everybody was amazed. Then came the report some bacteria has be have become resistant to pen penicillin. So this doctor called William Falta in Vienna suggested, he just suggested, maybe this is what is happening. And boy, endocrinologists were happy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They didn't want to establish it. They just accepted it as true. Right, right. And so not, 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 not to demonstrate any of my ignorance, but so type 1 diabetes is, is typically found in children and type 2 is what we develop as adults. Is that... Pretty much yes, it. that okay. is the general category. Type one can happen in adults if their pancreas get damaged. Okay, and type one is fairly well understood. It, it's treated with insulin um, and, and it's managed. Type two is not understood at all. It sounds like, but I mean, other than by by you and, and you, you practiced this type of medicine for almost three decades, right? I mean, you're not you're not just well, walking in off the street. I, I I did not practice diabetes. Okay, but. When, when I was in training in the medical school, in the residency, during the residency, one, my own relative who was taking insulin, an adult who was taking insulin, was told she need to have an amputation of a leg. Her husband was a professor of pathology in a medical school. He kept injecting her with insulin, kept her A1C below seven religiously. Yet, she ended up with a complication and had her leg amputated. So that shattered my thinking. If you treat somebody with a medication and if the disease is not responding, you know, why? There is a reason. So I thought, well, maybe she did not respond to insulin. They will change it. You know what the doctors did? They not only gave, gave continued the insulin, but increased the dosage. Yeah. Yeah. And a couple of years later, she had her other leg amputated. Oh. The poor husband, he had to take care of her yeah. on his own. He's elderly, she's elderly. So that is what made me think. If So the common advice is you are type 2 diabetic because you're insulin resistant. Okay. Just like the penicillin, a bacterial resistant to penicillin, now, if you are resistant to an antibiotic, the doctor will not give you the same antibiotic, will they? No, that's right. Yeah, we've got many dozens, if not more of them, dozens and dozens of so, them. So if you are resistant to insulin, 
why are you asked to take insulin <laughs> yeah no i i i understand the contradiction <laughs> So that is again compounded the problem. And yeah. if you even if you keep A1C below seven using insulin, you have fifty percent chance of having your kidney damage. Jesus, you have twenty five percent chance of having your vision damaged. Oh wow! You have two and a half percent chance of having your leg amputated. Wow! You have sixty percent chance of having neurological issues. That's sensations or you know all yeah. kinds. No problems. Well, and and this is this is a big thing. You were telling me right before we came on, like 120 million Americans are, are diabetic or pre-diabetic, marching down the path. That's like a third. Yeah. That's a lot of people. It is a lot of people, <laughs> and it is not going down. We yeah. have known that, you know, in, in 20 years, in by we will have 50 million fully diagnosed. Now they have got about 40. Now it will be 50 million. Wow. And it will... Over in the world, there are 500 million people with type two diabetes right now, half a billion. Well, so so walk so so your book, the real cause and the right cure. You know, I don't want to give the book away, but um, but what what is what is your opinion? You know, what have you discovered on this that that is different than these what, what these treating physicians are doing? Well, the as I said, the diagnosis is based on elevation of blood glucose level. It is not as blood sugar, right? By the way, it is not the table sugar. Blood sugar is glucose, table sugar is sucrose. They are different. Okay, yeah. The sugar that you put in your coffee or tea or in your cake has nothing to do with causing type 2 diabetes. Okay. Unless you drink a whole lot of soda with high sugar or high fructose content. Right, right. So the first question is, if sugar elevation is the cause, is the reason for diagnosis, where is that sugar coming from? Into the blood, okay? It comes from your food. So if you don't put the source of glucose in your mouth, it cannot be in the blood. Is it really that simple? It is, that is the problem. When I give this presentation, people say, oh, that is too simple. It has to be complicated. Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That is the common this is the common question I ask. It cannot be like that. It has to be more complicated. You know how do you answer it? You know, right. If you if you if you don't want to get drunk, don't drink. I mean it's pretty it's a straight line, as they say. It it is. If you don't put it in your mouth, how can it be in your blood? Interesting. So then now the question is what part of food is absorbed into the blood as glucose? So I'm not suggesting everything you eat is contributing to your blood sugar, but if we can cut back on that portion, why would you need a medication? Right, and 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 just generally speaking, what what is I don't know what 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 kind of food is it that 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 does? Well, before we go to that, let, okay. let me ask you one more question: When you inject somebody with insulin, the blood glucose level goes down. Right. Where does it go? <laughs> I don't know. It does not go out of the body. It goes out of the blood, but not out of the body. Oh, and your digestive system, I would guess? No. No, I don't know. <laughs> it is converted into fat. Okay. And that fat blocks your arteries. That creates all the complications. Oh. Okay. 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 Now let's go back to the question. What kind of food? Yeah. Now, let me give you two examples. When Native Americans were brought to the reservations in the year 1900, they had complete physical examination and medical examination. And they had more people over the age of 80 and 90 per 100,000 population compared to white Americans at that time. Okay? Yet, they had very little heart disease, type 2 diabetes, or cancer. Okay? Okay. Now, if you look at Pima Indians in Arizona, above age 35, adults, 50% of them have type 2 diabetes. 50%. Okay. And, and 
the Native Americans have higher incidence of cancer now compared to white Americans living in the same area. Okay, I can see how to get to the answer then, but I don't know what it is. It's clearly whatever they're eating now they weren't eat, that they weren't eating then, right? So, right. So something changed. Right. So let us think about it. The Native Americans, they moved from one food source to another. They ate everything nature gave them. Fruits, nuts, vegetables, tubers, animals, fish, eggs. But they did not eat one thing. They never stayed in a place long enough to cultivate grains. I've, yeah, I've heard a lot of bad stuff about grains. You, they did yeah. not eat cultivated wheat or corn or yeah. rice or maize or whatever. What happened when they were marching? They were given fry bread, cornmeal with lard, and they were given free food or very subsidized meal made of grain flour right. in the reservation. And they started having obesity. They started having type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular problems. So, can I continue? No, please. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm wildly fascinated. Yes, please. So, if you take 100 grams of whole grain, wheat or rice, it is 77 grams of glucose, pure glucose, when it is digested and absorbed into the blood. Wow. If you take 100 grams of refined grain, like white rice, it is 80 grams of glucose. Okay. Yeah, so 77 versus 80, practically no different. Right. So people talk about, oh, you have to eat whole grain. Yeah. When, when it is glucose, it makes no difference. I, I'm actually, I, I've heard that, I've, I've heard, um, not this argument when it comes to diabetes, but I've heard the argument against grains and how grains have evolved so much from 2000 years ago and they don't really fit with our diet anymore. Um, the counter argument I hear to that is that while that might be true, there's no other way to feed everyone. Do, 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 do you tackle that at all? Yeah, well, that that is the problem. The reason it is cheaper is because every government in the world is subsidizing either grain yeah. farming, fertilizing, or food subsidy. <clears throat> every government around the world promote farming. But we are the only country not only promote farming, but also sub subsidize feeding the people with this grain flour foods. Mm. So we have a double whammy here. Yes, double whammy, yeah. Wow. If you can provide the same amount of subsidy for vegetables and fruits and nuts, yeah. then we have a different mix of ingredients for our diet. Mm. Now, what are the cheapest food available? What are the most convenient food available? They are all almost made with Grain flour. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is rice, right? I mean, um, rice and oats and all that stuff. Yeah. Wow. When is the last time you had a meal or a snack without a grain flour product? Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I, yeah. yeah for, now, for me, just, just personally, I actually got myself off a lot of that because I just didn't feel good. And I had read not nothing to do with diabetes or I, I just, I had read it wasn't that good. So I don't eat that much of it. And I feel like, I don't know, a hundred times better. Um, good for you. Yeah. And when I do eat it, I feel terrible. So, yeah, absolutely. All you have to do is look at the mid morning blast and the mid afternoon blast. You know, two yeah. hours after the breakfast, your energy level goes down. And some people go for energy drink without knowing why did the, the energy go down. When you have a high carbohydrate breakfast, in an hour and a half to two, the blood sugar shoots up. That causes your pancreas to release insulin. The insulin brings the blood glucose level down. Not only that, it prevents the body from utilizing the alternate fuel, which is fatty acid, from producing energy. Yeah, wow. So you get starving feeling, you get restless. You, so you eat something. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, so when you lunch, 
you eat a high level of carbohydrate based food and the same thing happens in the afternoon i know it's because we're and we're all addicted to caffeine which then masks the symptoms right because exactly. all of us all of us are users we're all caffeine users um right. and, and that's how we cover those lows which is even worse for us so it's yeah. it's, it's so a spiral sim simply cut down the amount of carbohydrate based foods to 50 percent half of what you are eating right now you start feeling better. You yep. don't have the mid-morning blasts or the mid-afternoon low energies. And, that and, is what you have to do. And you think um, for people with type 2 diabetes or who are at risk, because that's probably right for type right. 2 diabetes, that simple change could save millions and millions of lives. L let me give you the second example. In 1980s, one doctor in Australia asked 10 Australian aborigines with type 2 diabetes who are on medication, can you go back to the bush and live like your ancestors did? And they said, fine, we will go. In eight weeks. Wow. That, that, that is the title of this week, eight <laughs> steps. You know, okay. in, eight, in eight weeks, they lost weight, their blood sugar became normal. They stopped all their diabetic medic medi oral medications. Wow. They stopped. Wow. Now, what's the difference? The difference is they did not eat any cultivated grains. They were moving. Right. Before they went to the bush in their urban life, 50% of their total daily food energy intake came from grains. Yeah, at least 50, right? I would I'd imagine right. more. 50 to 70 percent. Yeah. In the bush, in the wild, some days they had 5%. The maximum was 35%. Okay. Wow. That's the maximum. So average about 20, 25% of energy came from carbohydrates. Wow. Wow. Well, Dr. John, I can talk to you about this forever, but we can't let the podcast go on forever. So I want to, I guess we have to wrap it up, but I, I'm, I think it's, it, it's everything that you're looking for. It, 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 it can save millions and millions of people, both quality of life and, and just their life in general. Um, it's based in good observable science. Uh, and it's simple. I mean, it's like the perfect, I, 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 I hope you get the word. How, how long has this book been out now? It's about two to three, about three, two and a half years, three years. Two and a half the, years. The main thing I want people to understand is they are not at the mercy of the endocrinologist or the doctor. They are not uh, controlled by a medication. They have to take charge. I think that's. They think that's... are in charge. If they are in charge, but if the doctor tells you, okay, you are resistant to insulin, but you need to take insulin, ask the question. Right. Why? What well, is the evidence? And it's not mutually exclusive, right? If, if they're on it, insulin stuff, they could start this diet and then in two months see if they still need the insulin, C couldn't they? Yes. I mean, they you, don't, start you, coming back. you don't have to take a risk. I mean, because then you can eat whatever you want. I mean, this is just basic smart eating as you get older, I think. so. Exactly. That yeah. is the message I want. And I thank you and people like you who are helping me to spread the message. I don't, I have a website, drjohnonhealth.com. I don't sell any products, no supplements, nothing, just information. I think, yep. I have, an, I have an animation video to show how some people who are lean become diabetic. Some people who are obese are not diabetic. Right. And some young ladies, they become diabetic only when they are pregnant. And then it goes away. Gestational diabetes. All these are explained in that video. That's that's great. Now I will put links to all of your stuff be below this video, and I hope the, these videos have been doing okay. So I, I hope we reach a wide audience with this. I think it's it's an important message, and it's a simple message, but it, it goes to the core of being alive. I yeah, mean, but think about who am I? Who am I against? <laughs> not against it. Yeah. Well, yeah. The yes, but we won't we won't just say who we're against because we want to make sure the video goes out. Um, right. But I totally. Get it, and this is the kind of stuff we got to start doing as a people. We're very smart as a group. You know, individually we can be knuckleheads, but as a right. group we know a lot. Um, and and we have to. Let me say I can say this right. We have to 
what you just said, take charge of ourselves and get to the real information that's going to work for us. And it, and it doesn't mean that information is always going to come from the easiest place or, or the, the place that the system necessarily puts you in front of. Uh, and I think that's hugely important. Don't believe, don't believe what I say unless it makes sense to you. Yeah. Well, and it's, you know, it's not like it's not like the opposite. It's not like you're telling them to shoot insulin in. You're just telling them eight steps, eat right, learn, learn how your body works. And you could very well find that the, uh, the quality of your quality of life improves exponentially. So I, I think it's fantastic. I'm very glad that we got a chance to talk, sir. Thank you, David. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, Dr. John, thank you very much. And uh, we'll, we'll talk later. Bye. Thank you for watching. Please consider hitting the subscribe button.